The Sonic franchise is loaded with well-known heroes, but let's not forget the slew of villains we've gotten these past 29 years. From the malice of machinery to the mayhem of magic, there's such a variety of supervillains, and they each have something that makes them as remarkable as they are menacing, mm, save for a few. So, which are the best? I'll be judging them by design, personality, feats, boss battles, and how they affect the heroes. Now let's dive in and see the top 10 Sonic villains. Dark Gaia from Sonic Unleashed Whereas Light Gaia's responsibility is to create, Dark Gaia's purpose is to destroy. Eggman uses Super Sonic's power to reawaken it prematurely, splitting the world apart and rendering the deity incomplete in the process. Now it's letting its minions loose and affecting Guardian spirits around the globe. After its introduction, it doesn't do much, so throughout the story, it's gradually regaining energy, but at the end is where it itself is unleashed. It absorbs Sonic's Werehog form to achieve its horrific state and covers the world in darkness. Its boss fights are a drag. The concept is brilliant. Chip draws all seven Gaia temples to him and combines them into a giant suit of stone armor, Gaia Colossus. He latches onto Dark Gaia and Sonic hits each eye. Gaia Colossus is way too slow approaching Dark Gaia, and Sonic segments have time limits and a barrage of fireballs impeding your progress. The perfect Dark Gaia battle is more bearable, but not much to write home about. Iblis may have accomplished more by engulfing the entire world in fire, but he's mindless. Dark Gaia is more intelligent, evident when it takes Sonic's Werehog power, and it's scarier with its serpent-like design and its transformation with blood gushing out and the giant eye growing on its face. <sighs> Sucky boss fights aside, Dark Gaia brings a world of hurt. Eraser Jin from Sonic and the Secret Rings. After granting wishes to 1,000 people, Eraser's been released from his land prison, and now the evil genie is after revenge by taking the words of the Arabian Nights stories and cursing the inhabitants. When he's finished, his master plan is to bring himself into the real world. Eraser is one mean SOB. He attempts to scorch the more innocent genie Shara for not bringing him the Seven World Rings, but Sonic takes the hit and the flame on his chest is a time bomb that only Eraser can undo. His Arabian warrior design looks out of place for a Sonic game, which is fitting since the game setting was meant to be otherworldly. It's the free spirit adolescent against the ruthless Autark, and that's always fun to watch. And he's surprisingly active, making numerous appearances, summoning demons, and taunting Sonic. He even gets on his nerves by frequently calling him a blue rat. You, blue rat, have you gathered the seven rings yet? And enough of that rat stuff. Seriously, I'm a hedgehog. Hedgehog. Things don't get ugly until the ending. He kills Shara while she was protecting Sonic, takes four of the Seven World Rings, turning him into the grotesque of Layla Walayla. After his defeat by Darkspine Sonic, his credibility falls like a ton of bricks as Sonic sits on his throne and pones him into oblivion. I cannot be denied by that filthy rat! Why? I told you, I'm not a rat! I'm a hedgehog! <laughs> His boss fights are good on paper, but damn are they frustrating. Being in one of the worst controlling Sonic games will do that, his acts of evil do bring out Sonic and Shara's selflessness when he tries to kill each of them, building them up as heroes. As sloppy as Secret Rings is, Eraser Jin is a razor-sharp baddie. You filthy rat! I'll shut that mouth of yours permanently! Chief Pachakamak from Sonic Adventure. You never fight him, and none of the heroes talk to him, but he's responsible for so much misery. The leader of the ancient Echidna tribe is corrupted by his greed and thirst for power. 
provoking him to take the Chaos Emeralds to invade and conquer other cultures. In his words, it's for the good of his people. But that's him justifying his orders to seize the Emeralds, even if it means injuring or killing his own daughter, Tikal. He's like the Donzo of Sonic, a power-hungry despot who's more interested in gaining supreme authority than the well-being of his tribe. Going after the Emeralds enraged the aquatic god Chaos, destroying most of his tribe, including Pachacamac. Because of what Pachacamac's done, the gods who created the Chaos Emeralds ascended Angel Island into the sky, where a guardian will keep watch over the Master Emerald every generation. Pachacamac did have an impact on Knuckles, and eventually, Station Square. The consequences for what he's done are devastating. Pachacamac is a cautionary tale in how avarice can make monsters. I don't listen to the words of a child! Ready, men? Charge! Black Doom from Shadow the Hedgehog As the alien army the Black Arms invade, their sovereign directs Shadow to bring him the Seven Chaos Emeralds due to a promise made years ago. Black Doom is the first villain to get in Shadow's skin and bring him to the side of evil, in the darker past at least. He and Shadow share a twisted father and son bond, appropriate since... Obi-Wan never told you what happened to your father. He told me enough. He told me you killed him. No. I am your father. No, no, that's not true. That's impossible. Search your feelings. You know it to be true. Damn you! No, it's not true. He donated some of his blood to Shadow's creator, Gerald Robotnik, in exchange for the emeralds in a later time. He sees Shadow as his most prized soldier. In the Hero Pads, he'll persistently order him to do his bidding, although when it's clear that Shadow won't work for him, he has no qualms in killing him. The way he's designed and dressed makes him look like a satanic bishop from another planet. The boss battles against him in his standard form are alright, hurling meteors and psychic waves at you as he floats around. But his final form? Oh, I love this fight! He transforms into the gargantuan Devil Doom, which is the most hardcore name I've ever heard. Devil Doom has two heads on both sides, with his eyes switching between them. He spits fire, creates asteroids that shoot lasers, summons debris from the city below, and he can use cast control to teleport. A few things ruin him for me. He can be pathetic in the hero path, where he constantly asks Shadow to do the dark missions after his mind's made up. He's not gonna do it. He also doesn't need Shadow. The Black Arms alone can do these missions. Those are your men, right? Yep. Guarding all four generators. Ah. You are in contact with your men. Correct. So, uh, could you ask your damn men to activate the generators? They're staring next to them already, for damn sake. They activate the generators, then I continue looking for the Chaos Emeralds. What's that for a plan, huh? And lastly, his inclusion in Shadow's past feels so unnecessary. His backstory established in Sonic Adventure 2 was enough. We didn't need this Darth Vader revelation. When he's at his best, Black Doom is a devilishly good villain. Then get ready to die. Let me show you the ultimate power in the universe. Gerald Robotnik from Sonic Adventure 2 the grandfather of Dr. Eggman and leading pioneer in the massive leap in technology. He invented some of the most dangerous weapons in the franchise, such as the planet-destroying Eclipse Cannon and the rabid Bile Lizard. His greatest creation was Shadow, who had potential to be a hero or a destroyer. He's one of the more tragic Sonic characters. Everything was going well for him, until the military raided the Space Colony Ark and killed his granddaughter, Maria. Now he has descended into insanity, and revenge on the world is all he can think about. He edited Shadow's memory of Maria's final wish. Instead of giving everyone a future, he made Shadow think she wanted everyone to pay. He sets the Space Colony Ark to crash into the Earth when all seven Chaos Emeralds are inserted into the console of the Eclipse Cannon, and he set the Bio Lizard to act as a guard dog, preventing the Emeralds from being neutralized. The way he saw Shadow as a weapon instead of a person with his own opinions and using a lie of his own granddaughter to fuel his hatred, that's how low he's gotten. Gerald Robotnik, an endless case of revolutionary science and secrets. Me. 
Merlina from Sonic and the Black Knight, undoubtedly the most surprising villain. We did not expect her to be the main antagonist. At first, we saw her as another human-esque supporting character like Elise or Shara, but it turns out that the Black Knight, King Arthur, was a red herring and a fake created by Merlin, her grandfather. She looked into the future and saw how chaotic and bloody Camelot would end. So she's going through extremes, using powers of the underworld to ensure that Camelot will last forever, no matter how gruesome things get. Her intentions are good, but she's blinded by this obsession. I like how she looks more demonic by the end, conveying how far she's fallen. The boss fight against her is pretty dang cool. In Sonic's Excalibur form, he parries against Merlina's giant swords, slices her magic projectiles, and slashes at her stand. After the final battle, Sonic quells her sense of hopelessness and she's at peace. Merlina, the best female Sonic villain by far. I shall make this Dr. Eggman. The OG bad guy is the most eccentric. He goes above and beyond in achieving the means to build his mega industrial empire. His round egg-shaped physique is asking for egg-themed weapons, but they're not all comedic. The cute moto bugs and egg ponds are harmless compared to the more ferocious egg hammers in E2000, but they all have that Eggman signature manner. It is a wonder how he can pay for all these robots and ships. How can you afford these things? Usually, Eggman is the cause of every dilemma the heroes face, awakening a god of destruction or a key character from sleep. When Sonic Adventure 2 arrived and the Doctor himself was a playable character in a main series game, you bet your ass he was fun to play as. It's not too far-fetched for him to work alongside the heroes, given the situation. He is self-worshipping, but he can recognize life-threatening danger. And the boss fights. Each of them is a blast. A few highlights being the first Death Egg Robot, Kyodai Eggman Robo, Doomsday Zone, Egg Viper, True Area 53, and the first two Egg Dragoon battles. Watch this video for more about him. Bold, brave, and cold-hearted. He is the Eggman. He's got the master plan. <laughs> Metal Sonic. The creation has surpassed the creator. Metal Sonic is Sonic's original rival. In Sonic CD, he kidnaps Amy Rose, and Sonic can't save her. For the first time, the blue blur feels powerless. The two settle it in a death race in Stardust Speedway, with Sonic coming out on top, but Metal isn't done yet. In Knuckles' is Chaotix, he takes it a step further. With the final Chaos Ring, he transforms into the hellish Metal Sonic Kai. In the bad ending, you see him reveling before a burning city. Fight my red-hot glowing ass! His next big outing is in Sonic Heroes. After upgrading into Neo Metal Sonic, he locks Eggman in the Egg Fleet and disguises himself as in T-1000 style while encountering all four teams to copy their data. It's Metal Sonic we've been battling all along. When the truth is out and Eggman admits Metal's behind everything, you can see the fear on his face. Eggman's terrified of Metal Sonic. So, Neo Metal Sonic reveals himself and gathers the material around the ship to give him a sick kaiju body. With the data of the heroes, he's at his peak. Metal Overlord. This is one of the best Sonic boss fights ever. Each team takes a turn in fighting him, and when Team Sonic powers up, it's on. Metal Overlord fires crystals, homing missiles, he throws battleships at you, and he can use Chaos Control to stop time. He was at his prime in this game. All his forms are badass. And they all have the same look in his eyes. You can see how cold and heartless he is. And he's always searching, calculating for ways to become stronger. Later installments like to keep him repeating the start of Speedway race as Eggman's pet. Metal Sonic is above that. Do something new with him. There have been multiple robotic Sonics before, but none of them can top Metal Sonic. Chaos, from Sonic Adventure. The demigod who ended the Echidna tribe and devastated Station Square was a peaceful, protective guardian of the Chaos Emeralds, the Master Emerald, and the Chow. Pachaka Mac's attack on the shrine injured many Chow, incurring Chaos's wrath. After he decimated Pachaka Mac and his followers, Tikal seals herself and Chaos inside the Master Emerald for 4,000 years, until Eggman breaks them out in Sonic Adventure. 
For most of the narrative, he acted as Eggman's lackey as the conceit of scientist feeds him Chaos Emeralds, evolving every time. He has six forms total, each more intimidating than the last. And his boss fights offer something different. Chaos 2 bounces around a restaurant and blocks your attacks. Chaos 6 needs to be frozen for you to damage him. And in Big Story, you can fish for Froggy inside of him. How many boss fights let you do that? But it's no question that the best battle is at the end. In the last story, Chaos is nearing the final emerald, and the tension is through the roof. When he has all seven, he becomes the Leviathan Perfect Chaos, and unleashes all his bottled rage after millennia of imprisonment. He floods Station Square, and is up to Super Sonic to beat him. You need enough speed to shoot yourself into Chaos and blast out of his mouth. On your way there, he fires lasers and tornadoes at you. This battle is exhilarating, challenging, and rewarding. When the fight's over, Chaos's anger has been abated, and he and Tikal ascend into heaven, ending their turmoil. We're afraid of Chaos, but at the same time, we feel sympathy for him. He's been through so much. We understand, but we know we have to stop him. Chaos is a revolutionary Sonic villain who took the franchise by storm. Nephilim's The Dark from Sonic 06. You can't get more insidious, more haunting than Mephiles. The Duke of Soliana directed the Solaris Project, an experiment with the intent to control time. The Sun God is broken into two halves, the Flame Iblis and the Darkness Mephiles. After 10 years of being locked into the Scepter of Darkness by Shadow, he breaks free. His awakening is the stuff of nightmares. He stuns the Egg Gunners and bursts out of the Scepter, prompting Eggman to run for the hills. When Eggman's afraid, you know it's bad. Mephilus dives into Shadow's well Shadow and rises from the ground in his new form, identical to Shadow. And he wraps it up by sending Shadow and Rouge into the future, ruled by Iblis. The way he moves, it's like a corpse that's just been granted life, and he speaks as if he's always in charge. Whenever he's on screen, it's chilling. That cutscene I played earlier says it all. What else makes him sinister is how he gets to the heroes. Mephilus plays an integral role for all three main characters. He misleads Silver into thinking killing Sonic in the past will erase Iblis, but in truth, it would release him. He tries to tempt Shadow into betraying humanity and splitting Team Dark, going as far as to show him his grim fate. And yes, he's the only villain to kill Sonic. Out of all the bad guys here, he accomplished his mission, join with Iblis and become Solaris, what happens after that? He doesn't care. That's Solaris' problem. There is a plot hole, though. If he can jump to any point in time, why not fuse with Iblis already? Here's my take. He's immortal and sadistic. Before going out and fusing with Iblis, he'll have some fun by tricking a decent kid into murdering an innocent teenager and getting revenge on the one who sealed him. He'll get what he wants no matter what. It's inevitable. He has only two boss fights, both in Shadow's campaign. The first has him sending his horde of minions while latching onto you underground, untouchable. You get him off by activating Chaos Boost. Mephilus' one drawback is that he's not one of the strongest villains. In fact, he's easy to beat, but he doesn't have to be the most powerful. In the second battle, he covers the ground with dark water and changes into his monstrous form while making copies of himself out of it. While the game's known for being buggy, I rarely had a problem with these two. They're a couple of the best boss fights in this title in my opinion. Mephilus is one of the most requested characters to return in future games. He has a following larger than most villains, and I think Sega has a soft spot for him. I can see him working in a new game with a different origin, but as long as he's written as joyously vile as he was in 06. Mephilus the Dark, evil, terrifying, and eternal. The best Sonic villain. 